Hey guys, how's it going? October 13th, and oh boy, I didn't watch another movie, so I'm going to talk about a movie that I've seen a million times again, but I don't feel so great about this as a review because it's been so long since I've seen it, and the story is kind of convoluted. There's a lot to it, so I don't remember everything, but... I'm going to talk about what I do remember, I guess. Uh, first of all, the movie is Dreamcatcher, and it's based on a Stephen King novel. Which, you know, there's a lot of good ones that are based on Stephen King novels, and a lot of junk, too. But, um, I guess, I've never read any of his books, but I guess that he's the kind of author that just throws, throws stuff at the wall just to see what will stick, basically. just He just makes so many books that they're hit and miss, but I was looking at some of the reviews for this the other night, uh, preparing, thinking ahead of time that I was probably going to do this, and I saw that, you know, it doesn't have such a great reviews, but the same for Cabin Fever and a lot of other movies that I've talked about. But I remember very first seeing clips of this movie when, that around the same time that I saw House of a Thousand Corpses for the first time. I talked about how, like, in Peoria, I went to, like, a pizza place, like, when I was a teenager, and it was, like, a hangout spot, and they had a movie, and people were watching this, and I really love the beginning of this movie, from what I remember. All I know is that there's, like, guys in a cabin, and it's, like, snowy where they are, and this movie is basically, like, an alien invasion movie, but the first thing that happens is there's some kind of alien, like a warm kind of alien, like, I don't know how to describe it, like a centipede kind of thing or something, and it's, uh, they have, like, a struggle with it, and one of the guys is, like, in the bathroom or something. I think, actually, one of the guys is, like, taking a dump, and the, the alien first comes by, like, burrowing through him, like, through his ass or something. We don't, like, see that, but... I think they open the door or something, and the guy on the toilet's, like, dead, and there's, like, blood all over, and they get him off the toilet or something, and then, like, that alien escapes, and it's, like, really strong, and they try to close it in there. I don't really remember what goes on from there. If they get it back into the toilet or something, flush it, I don't know. But uh, just the way that it's set up and the way that it was filmed and how bloody it is, I remember that being a really intense scene really well directed i don't know who the director of this is though but there's really kind of like at least two parts to this movie because there's that whole part of the movie and then after that we see like helicopters coming in and all the critters and the wildlife like the deer and the rabbits and everything are like running away maybe it's just deer i don't know but they're all like going in one direction there's some kind of phenomenon, some kind of event, and it's basically like aliens have landed and like the government's coming in to try to control it or whatever. And Morgan Freeman's in this, and Morgan Freeman is like kind of like the leader of the the government organization or whatever to stay on top of this. But it's about these group of friends, and somehow, somehow, you know, they they made a pact when they were like younger. Basically, like, I think one of their friends is an alien, and they don't know it, but this this friend who's an alien, like, told them about a lot of things that was going to come in the future or something, and maybe they didn't really understand it at the time, but, like, this was the time, I think. I mean, I may be telling the story kind of wrong. Anyway, one of the guys, somehow, like, the alien gets in his body, and you see him on the, the, the snow ski there and how he smiled to the side basically like the alien takes control of his body and um so like the actual person is still inside of his head and he's like fighting the alien like inside of his head and he has like all these rooms inside of his head filled with like books and stuff like libraries they're like books filled with like his memories and his knowledge and stuff right and the alien's like chasing him in his head like trying to get to the secret room to get to this knowledge that he has or whatever and he's trying to like guard him or stop him from getting to that so that's kind of a cool concept i like that too but anyways just to jump to the conclusion of the movie somehow you know they find out 
that that friend is an alien basically and like he has a confrontation with this other alien and there's like an alien battle in the end so you know there's flashbacks throughout time and then there's times when we go inside the guy's mind and then there's times when we're like back in the current time in the real world so it's pretty far-fetched it's a lot there's a lot there but i think there's some great directing there's some great acting and you know with morgan freeman being in it jason lee is in it who i think is in some of kevin smith's movies but i don't really know exactly off the top of my mind what else jason lee is in but he's the guy that wears glasses i guess that's kind of what inspired me to wear these black frame glasses here but here's the cover for it i don't remember what the dream catcher actually has to do with it but you see it's from stephen king it says evil slips through Thomas Jane, Morgan Freeman, Jason Lee, Damon Lewis, and whoever else. I don't know these other people, but let's read the back of it. Dreamcatcher oozes with horror, says the Miami Herald. It says Jonesy, Henry, Pete, and Beaver are bonded by friendship and by strange powers each acquired on a fateful day in their childhood. But now a horrific entity is putting their friendship and powers to the test, and some of the four will die, and some will save the world from a menace unlike anything ever seen. Suspense, heroism, awesome effects, they're unleashed in the Stephen King tale adapted by William Goldman and director-co-writer Lawrence Kasdan. A splendid cast headed by Morgan Freeman as a shoot-first as a shoot-first alien hunter powers the eerie goings on ranging from monster flush fest to a massive animal migration to inner mindscapes and beyond dreamcatcher is a sci-fi horror fans dream come true and yeah i just think that the bathroom scene just sticks in my mind so much i just love that that whole bit and yeah it's pretty pretty chilling pretty creepy it was back in the day um, and then after that, it's kind of like, yeah, it gets all into more, like, it's like straight horror at the beginning, okay, with this monster and all the blood and stuff. And then, like, when we find out, like, the government conspiracy and everything, and then it's, like, aliens, and then it gets, like, more sci-fi. So that's how it's kind of like two different films, almost. But, um, but I do love the sci-fi part of it, too. I mean, it kind of goes down a little bit, maybe, from the from the beginning of it but i think that it all goes together all right so and i don't know why this movie just kind of stuck out to me just to watch it over and over and over again i just i just thought it's special it's different i say that movies are different so much but it really is anyway i need to watch it again see what I think of it now um, hmm. <laughs> the, uh, the friend that's an alien is one that's not that I didn't name at the beginning but his name is Duditz I think but he's kind of slow the alien as a person or whatever he's kind of slow his name is Duditz he's like I Duditz I Duditz so you'll remember that if you watch it. But wow. Anyway, I probably said as much as I can say without watching it again. But well, when was it made? I don't know. It was like in the 2000s, the early 2000s. Because I said, you know, I think that Cabin Fever and stuff was like 2004 or whatever. Hmm. I don't know. I see something about 2001 or something, but maybe it's 134 minutes. It says 2003 looks maybe like it was when it was. Anyway, it's all kind of around the same time, but I think it'll always be special to me. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. And what is this Braille up here? Is that Braille? interesting all right maybe 13 see you guys later on to the next